so when I became a mom, I figured, um, especially more recently, that nobody really cares about reviews as much. There are so many reviews out there, um, sampling and testing and all of that good stuff. I think, especially um, in the community that I belong to, we want to talk about um, our experiences, our survival skills when it comes to deployment um, and being a four deployed Navy spouse. Now, I have Khajiit here who wants to play with my makeup too. Say hi, Jeepers. She's so much bigger now, isn't she? Um, but please let mommy do her makeup, okay? <laughs> so, in do you guys hear that? That's still babbling over there. In my first installment of um, this thing that I want to call deployment diaries, I just want to talk about how it doesn't matter the length of the deployment. It's going to be difficult regardless. Um, and the reason why I brought this up is last week I posted on Facebook that Stella and I are so, 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 so looking forward to Alex coming home. Um, this is not an OPSEC breach like my husband is currently deployed. Um, and we are counting down the days. We want him to come home. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only spouse that feels that way. But anyway, I posted that. And I got several um, messages back in my inbox saying, well, when did he leave? Like, the rota schedule isn't all that bad. In fact, it's like one of the easiest in, you know, Navy-wide. And for a second, like, I just stared at my phone. And it's like... Nobody asks. Like, the point is, here's what I'm trying to say without becoming too obnoxious. It doesn't matter what the schedule, what the tempo, what, you know, theater you belong to, or even, quite frankly, Khajiit, stop. What branch of service you're in. When you're deployed, you're deployed, and it doesn't matter. It's difficult for the families, the spouses, and everybody involved in general. Like, there is no, my deployment is harder than yours. This one is easier than that. Well, you're not on the West Coast, so you don't know how that feels. Or your husband's not a Marine, so it can't be that difficult. And it's like, whoa, 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 pause. It doesn't matter. Like, what branch of service or the duration of it, it's difficult. Like, across the board. And anybody that wants to contest that, honestly, is being silly. Like, if you have gone through some really bad deployments, even though you know other people have shorter or less strenuous ones, you'll be able to appreciate um, the struggle that they're going through because it is in no way, shape, or form funny or laughable or something that, you know, somebody should be shamed for. Like, you shouldn't be having a hard time. It's not that bad. Or you only have one child. What are you worried about? You should see how difficult it is for me. I think, like, people who do that, people who want up, man, y'all need to chill out for a second. Um, we all go through the same struggles. And really, truly, honestly... I do not think that there is anything that can like mentally or emotionally prepare you for how difficult deployment separation can be. Also, for the heck of it, um, this is the product that I'm using for my brows. It's called Elizabeth Mott, Queen of the Fill. Um, I saw this recommended on Amazon and on BuzzFeed Shopping, which I'm constantly on. So this one I think is pretty good and it did not take that long for my brows to get shaped. Anyway, so back to that. Yeah, like um, there is nothing on this earth that can pre prepare you for how strenuous or like how, how much it takes its toll on you, how much you're going to miss your spouse and how much you feel like you need them. While it is amazing, that while they're deployed, like, you are basically forced to be the strongest that you can be, to, like, depend on yourself, to make things happen, to make ends meet, um, and to get business done. I think that is an amazing, empowering feeling. There's also the flip side of that coin where you get lonely, you get tired, you get frustrated, you're wishing they were here, like, they're, they, they miss those little moments um, with the baby, like, um the little baby's triumphs, their milestones, the fact that they can babble now, they can sit upright, they're eating solid food, they missed that. Um, and those are moments that no matter the hazard pay or the sea pay that you get, you can't, you can't get that back. Um, and people be like, well, he's going to be coming home soon. You're right. 
but that doesn't discount any of these things that are happening. So a little background on me, I am a Navy brat. My father served honorably for 20 years and I am so proud of him. Um, he was enlisted in the Navy and I watched my mother go through deployment and I don't think I've given her enough credit for how she handled all of this. Like my mother, like to me as a child, it looked like she never broke a sweat. And I like to this day, I need to thank her for being that way, for being so strong despite all that. So when I got married um, and Alex had to like deploy what? Less than, less than two weeks after he and I got married? Like it was wild. Um, oh, so what I've been putting on my eyelids, by the way, is just bronzer. So I just use bronzer and contour on my eyes, and I'm going to use the same on my face. So you're you're not using, like, multiple products. It's just one thing. But um, when he deployed, well, when I married him, I figured, ah, you know, I, I'm a Navy brat. I got this, like I know what I'm doing and all of that. It's not gonna suck. I already know what's gonna happen. You know, I've been I've been teaching deployment resiliency and all of that with fleet and family for like the duration of my career since what, twenty twelve? So that's like that was like a good five years of me doing nothing but deployment resiliency, teaching ombudsman, preparing families for the service member leaving. So it's like I've got this, I know what I'm doing, I'm okay. I was so wrong. There, Like I said, there is no amount of training that can prepare you for that. And when Alex deployed, I remembered, um, and I still lived with my family, and it was still hard for me. Um, I remember the old ladies at our church were asking how I was doing through my mom. They're like, oh, you know, you know, he's deployed. Um, how is she handling it? <clears throat> Blah, blah, blah. I'm starting like to crouch right now because it's kind of difficult. I need to have a better setup in the future. Um, they asked, how is she doing? And my mom answered for me. And she was like, oh, she's doing just fine. Like, she's okay. She's, she's seen me go through all of this. So she's an expert. She knows what's up. And, you know, I was just silent there. And I just looked at my mom. And deep down inside, like, I didn't want to be, like, rude or anything like that in church. But I was like, deep down inside, no, I'm not okay. I'm struggling. I'm not happy. I feel very sad. I'm not depressed. But I'm very sad. I am very sad. And, like, I, you struggle with it day to day. You wake up and you're like, wow, he's not here. Um, I really need him. Like, the little triumphs and, you know, battles that you have in everyday life that you wish you could talk about, you can't talk about. Because on those few seconds that you do get to talk to them on Facebook Messenger or um, you get to have an email, literally they have like, oh my goodness, on Messenger they'll have under a minute just to say, hi, I love you, good night. If, if you're lucky enough to get that. Um, in the emails that you have, it's the same thing. Hi, I miss you, I love you, take care of yourself, don't forget to lock the doors. Um, and you're just looking at those, you know, two and a half sentences and to most people that don't live the deployment lifestyle that seems like wow that's stupid but for us that's going through it when you haven't heard from your spouse in sometimes more than a week and I know let me put a pause here I know there are some spouses um, out there that they go through deployment it takes their spouse their significant others like two weeks to get back to them because of like they're in the desert or they're, they're doing something that's really, really top secret and intensive. And I'm not discounting that. I'm just talking about my experience right now. It's difficult. And seeing those three, you know, those three and a half sentences makes you the happiest person in the world. And I can't tell you, it feels like, it feels like, you know, your gas tank is, is all the way up to fill level and you're happy. And it's just an amazing feeling in the world. I wouldn't trade anything for it. But at the same time, it sucks because it's like, I want to know how are you doing? Are you sleeping right? Are you able to eat? Are the seas choppy? Are you getting along with people? Is anybody giving you problems? Like I want to ask those things. But guess what? Even if you wrote it down in an email, he's not going to have the time to answer them. Why? Because he is out there busting ass, making things happen. And that makes you so proud. But at the same time, it's like, I really, like, I want to tell you about what's happening. And they're too tired to listen to understand. And it's not because you married a jerk. 
No, it's because you married somebody that's so dedicated to their job that, that right now they do not have the mental or emotional capacity to understand any of that. Even when they come home for TRAV. So TRAV is a period um, in our deployment cycle here in Rhoda where they're going to be um, home for about two and a half weeks, if you're lucky, three weeks or whatever. And even when they're here for three weeks, they're not mentally or emotionally here for three weeks, sometimes not even physically. So for some families, especially the ones with like children that can understand, that can be a real butt kicker because they're like, is daddy really home? Yeah, he's home. Well, where is he? I don't know. He's still at work. Like I would take Alex to work at five in the morning. You'd be lucky if you could have him home by 9 p.m. If that, like it is no joke. And on the days when he can go home early, early here meaning like six o'clock, seven o'clock, he's never off of his phone. They're always calling and texting and all of that. So deployment doesn't stop when they're home. Like the Navy doesn't stop like that. It keeps going on and on and on and on. And it, it can be very difficult. Um, especially when you want to tell your spouse about it, but they're not mentally or emotionally there. Uh, when I married my husband, it was one of those things where I promised to always support you no matter what. And as far as I was concerned back then, young and dumb and naive, I figured, oh, supporting him, making sure there's always a hot meal on the table, making sure the house is clean and all of that, picking up when you need him, when he needs you, um, sending him care packages, it is so much more than that. Let me tell you what support means. Support means you've had a long, hard, difficult week, and when your significant other comes home, you have to understand that they want to unload on you. They want to tell you about how difficult work was, how they struggled with the sailor, how they helped this out, how they were stressed about inspection or the upcoming cycle, like the upcoming thing that's going to lead to the, um, the workups and all of that. They want to talk about that and they are so emotionally and mentally vested in it that you do not have time to get a word in edgewise. They're going to tell you all of the pains that they're going through. And sometimes there are tears involved. And they're going to say that, um, yeah, this happened to my sailor. I'm so worried about them. And you're going to get pissed off. You are. Because you're going to be like, you're so worried about, you know, petty officer, blah, blah, blah. But you can't even, you can't even worry about me or ask how my day's going. It's not because they're a jerk. It's because the tempo is that intense. Like, it is, it's unbelievable. So I think that's what supporting your sailor, supporting your service member means. And it can get really hard. Like, it means putting how you feel on the back burner until things are kind of okay to where they can pay attention to you. Um, you definitely put everything of how you feel or what you're going through, good and bad, on pause because you want to have to support them. Like you listen to the things that they're going through you listen to their stresses their heartaches the tensions these inspections these qualifications that they need to get and suddenly it feels like the stuff that you're going through isn't as important as his and really that's not healthy you have to make sure that you remember that your feelings are valid no matter that he or she cannot listen to what you're going through by no fault of theirs, your feelings are valid. Like my wonderful chaplain, chaplain rabbi friend reminded me before, before there is no hierarchy to stress. Just because they don't understand what you're going through doesn't make it irrelevant or and it doesn't invalidate it. But that's one of the things about being a military spouse, I think. You really, that is what support means. You put everything that you want to do, everything that you want to say, everything about how you feel, um, your worries, uh, everything, like basically everything. It gets put on the back burner because you want to make sure that they are mentally, physically, emotionally prepared to tackle the next day, the workups, and the next few weeks and months that they have at sea separated from you. And it's, it's not easy. 
Um, it almost feels thankless, especially when you are like in the moment. It's like, well, what about me? Like, sure, I have my friends. Sure, I have my family to FaceTime whenever they're awake on the other side of the world. But it's it's not fun to have your best friend not being able to be there for you mentally and emotionally because they can't because the military literally saps every ounce of focus in them and it feels like you're alone even when they're home for those you know few hours that they're home bless you sweetheart um so yeah, it doesn't matter. Like back to that person said, well, how long is he gone for? It doesn't matter how long he's gone for. It's still super, super, super difficult. It's still painful. And it still takes like a lot to be able to manage that. So if you're listening to me right now, say all of this stuff. It doesn't matter that deployment is just like, oh, eight weeks. It doesn't matter. Your feelings are valid. You're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be hurt and frustrated. You're allowed to feel like you're alone, like that your spouse can't be there for you. But the thing is here, what's important is know that you're not struggling alone. There are like tons of spouses out here like me in Rhoda that struggle, that do get sad, that admit that they are, you know, they're wrecked. That their significant others aren't here, not just here in Rhoda, Navy wide, all branches wide. And this is why it's so important to find your tribe. Find people that understand you, that support you, and you can support each other. Whether you're an introvert, an extrovert, or you're somebody that loves volunteering, or you're somebody that just wants to be in a quiet book club, it doesn't matter. There is support out there for you until we can get our significant others back. Um, and like, into shape to where they were before all of this happened you know what i mean um you have to find a way to take care of yourself and always remember that you are in fact not alone um so yeah i think that's something that when you make your vows when you marry your service member and they're in uniform, and it feels like such a fairy tale, and you feel like you're making such, you know, an amazing promise before the eyes of God and the church and the people that you love. Yeah, this, nothing could ever prepare you for something like this. And you know what? I would not change a thing of it, especially now that I have found my tribe, people that understand me and people that support me. Um, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And here's the thing that I really love. I've met so many um, women with higher ranking husbands, like back when I was in Newport. And here's something that they told me. My husband has been doing this gig for over 25 years and it still doesn't get easy. They still get hurt. They still get upset. But it's all worth it in the end. Like they tell me how difficult the struggle is, especially like when their kids are much younger, but that it's going to be okay and you're going to make it out alive and i think that's the message here if if nothing of what you've gotten from me like you will make it out alive you are going to be stronger for this and you will be able to tap into you a strength that you never ever ever thought was there like mother nature for whatever reason is like oh your husband's deployed girl i got you i'll make sure that you have the strength to get through this and i sincerely believe that that is super important that you know that if you're listening to me and you are struggling right now just as i am like i'm struggling right now um know that you've got this know that there are people out there know that you can reach out um, no matter how difficult you think it is, how isolated you feel that, that you feel you are, you're not, and it's going to be okay, but please reach out to us. Um, so yeah, you're stronger than you think. You are not alone. And most importantly, deployments will come to an end. And at the end of it, you will have bested it. Um, and it's going to be okay. So yeah, don't ever, 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 ever let anybody tell you that, oh, this deployment's short, you shouldn't be complaining about it. That's not on you to tell anybody that. Like, don't be a jerk and tell somebody, oh, well, this is short. Back when I was in Norfolk, the deployments were so-and-so. That doesn't discount what we're going through right now. It doesn't. And just because you're trying to put things into perspective, that just makes you a jerk. 
because you're trying to tell this person that how they're feeling right now is invalid. Don't be that person. Um, tell them that, yeah, you know what? Um, it's definitely different from the ones that my service member went through. But yeah, it, it's definitely tough. Tell them that. Be supportive. Since you've been through longer deployments, give them coping skills, okay? Don't be like, oh, it's not important. Oh, mine was, mine was worse. Guess what? My husband went to Djibouti. Okay, I'm sorry. But that doesn't, like, remember what my rabbi friend said. There is no hierarchy to stress. So basically, at the end of the day, what we have is to help each other out. And I think that is super, super, super duper important. Okay? All right. So that is my soapbox of the day. I hope you guys got something out of it. And again, if there is anything that you could have heard in this um, rant video, let it be known that deployments are tough. Your feelings are valid. You are not alone. And you are stronger than you think you are. Okay? So let me finish this up. And I need to have breakfast and get my butt going to all of the things that need to happen today. Because guess what? Life does not stop when the service member leaves. So we got to get going. Talk to you all later. Bye.